everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this really pretty piece of storage. You can have this anywhere in the house. Um, I'm probably gonna hang this on the wall eventually. For now, I'm probably just gonna keep it displayed on my desk. But basically, it's kind of like a letterbox, but I'm actually gonna show you the inspiration because I have it with me. But you lift up the top, so you've got this space here. And then the bottom, you pull this out and you have a drawer. But if you want to, you can leave the drawer and you could have it open like this and maybe you might want to put some Nuvo drops in there, maybe stack some you know ink pads or you might have some little memo post-it notes things like that that you want to use but it's got a really nice look to it. I have added the acetate windows on here with this kind of chicken or faux chicken wire and this is the inspiration so this is my egg storage this one here and you'll see you lift up the top and you pop your eggs in and then you have your drawer in the bottom for your eggs as well so that is the inspiration so I've taken the sizes and everything and you can see how I have now changed it into this you don't have to do the chicken wire I talk you all through that in the tutorial and this one just says my little egg house again you can put all that on there so that's why I've put this in my Easter series it's more of a spring storage project but the inspiration has come from this egg one which obviously eggs and Easter it all just kind of work together but so I hope you enjoy it and let's get into the tutorial Okay, so I've got all my pieces cut here and I've started putting bits together and then I started sticking bits down and I thought, no, I can't do that step yet. I need to just start filming. So what we're going to do, first of all, is I'm going to start with the back and I will go through all the measurements and like all the hinges. This is the paper I'm going to be using and I'll cut this down later. I was just going through my stash really and I've got these odd ones which were from the Minte Birdsong and this was from Thompson's Craft. I will have a look to see if she's still got any available, but otherwise go and check out the Minto papers anyway, because they're always beautiful. But I just loved this really weathered wood. You can see like the paint's kind of chipping off of it and stuff. And I just thought it's gonna look beautiful with all the flowers and everything over the top on this little project. So for now, you will need one piece of uh, seven by seven and a half and this is for the back and then I've started cutting like hinges and bits and pieces but what you want to do first of all is you want to get some paper that's going to match whatever pattern paper you're going to use so you see here you're only going to see very very small amounts of this and I am going to distress very slightly around the edges of all of this as well so just you know look at a paper that will complement the pattern paper that you use now this is the little paper, which I used last time. Um, it's a big pack of it that you get, actually, let me grab it here, and you can see it's this one here. So I've just pulled out the brown color there. I think it was the yellows that I used when I done the wagon. So this one here along the top, you're gonna need two pieces, but they are exactly the same length again. So these are seven by two. You don't have to do the two inches, but I quite like having that big hinge and it just, you know, helps add that strength. So you want two of them, one for the top and then one will go on the bottom. But you don't wanna do the bottom one yet because we will use that to attach it to the base, okay? So I've stuck one half down there, the other half leave like so because that is what we're going to be using to then stick the roof so let me grab my roof which is this one here so this is a piece of also the gray board is the two mil gray board that i use and again it's always linked below so you'll be able to have a look there this is four by seven and a half so it's half an inch wider than this piece here. So you wanna have a quarter of an inch overhang on each side. And what we're gonna do is this is gonna be stuck on here. Actually, you'll wanna decorate the roof first. So let me, so what you wanna do first of all is cut a piece of brown, in my case here. Again, this was a bit of scrap left towards the end, but you'd want it to be two again by the full length of the roof, which is seven and a half, okay? I'm just folding this in half freehand. If you would like to score them at one inch, right down through the middle, you can. But I'm just, you know, as long as you've got it roughly in half, it is a, you know, it's a strong paper, so you can just do it like that. But I'm gonna stick this over the edge here, and then the hinge will attach in fact, I'll probably attach the hinge underneath 
so we get a nice kind of working roof part there okay in fact yeah I quite like that because you'll get to see it's a roof so this piece here I'm just going to use my cloud glue which I'm using throughout and just do one side at a time so I'm just going to add the glue all along here just stick it onto the back there fold that one around and you can really push down and make sure you get it right up to the you know perfectly to both ends so it's covering all the edge of that grey board and what I like to do is once it's starting to dry is just kind of flatten the top with your you know uh, bone folder then pop some glue along the side of the grey board chipboard itself and then add your glue to the other half just like I do with the mini albums and stuff just rub the side there and you can push that all over so you get a really nice tight wrap around the sides of your grey board there. Again, just make sure it's nice and flat, like so. So actually we can carry on and decorate all of the roof because now I'm actually going to stick that underneath. We can do the sides and the front. So you will then also want, I've got here two pieces for the sides. Again, it's that full width, so it's four by two inches. So I'm gonna stick them on both sides and then you'll want another piece there, which is again, what did I say this was? So seven and a half by two and you wanna stick it over the front of your roof here. So I've done that, got that bit, yours won't have that bit on there, ignore that for the minute. And I've got a different colour there just because I'm using, I've used up the other one. So now we want to move on to the sides because I think it's going to be easier if you do them first. So you want two pieces here which are three and a half by seven and a half. And you want to come down, so from the left, you've got the left hand side here, on the right hand side you need to come down one inch and then just draw a pencil line so that uh, you know you join that one inch marker up to the top left there okay so I've got both of mine there and then you just want to cut across that I've just used my scissors but you know use a, a trimmer you know use one of your blunt blades if you would prefer but these scissors are pretty good they hold up well so I've just trimmed that off and you'll see there I've already covered that end Okay, so for that you will need a piece that is, make sure I've done the right one here, yeah that was right. This should be three and three quarters, yeah, three and three quarters by two and you want two pieces. Now they're overhang slightly because you're working on an angle but I just trimmed it off. So what you want to do is again fold it in half, again add your glue onto one side. When you pop it in here just make sure that. Well, it will just meet, but it might hang, hang over just ever so slightly, but just make sure that it covers from that side down to that side there. And again, just add your glue on the other side and stick that down. Okay, so you would have seen I just trimmed off the sides there. But you just want it like that. Okay, so next what's going to happen is grab the back. This one here is going to be your top, the, yeah, the top of it. And you'll have two pieces then of this, which is two by the whole height of the base, which is, of the back, sorry, which is seven and a half. Again, fold in half again. I've already stuck that one down, but I should have left one of the flaps up. So I'll just put another one on in a minute. But what you want to do is with one of the side pieces, the, the tallest side, the left hand side, is going to join onto the back of this one here. So you can see how the sides are coming and we want that slope, you want the shortest end facing you because that's where the roof will then sit on top and kind of come down like so. So the easiest way to do this again is as if you are, you know, making a mini album. So add your glue onto one half, stick this onto the back of this one here and you'll do the same on this side, okay? You'll see me, I'll speed that up and I'll just add that one in because it'll be a slightly different colour brown. Okay. 
Then you want to add your glue onto this side here. And you're going to lay this one down and just give yourself about one eighth of an inch gap. And once you've got it in place, you can just keep it in that, that right angle. But you want it to be side by side. It is, it's stuck to the side of this piece, not on top of it. I mean, again, I always say if it does go on top, it's not the end of the world. You just might have to you know, adjust your measurements slightly when you do the shelf. Okay, so that will now hold itself in that position. Okay, so then you want to do the same on the opposite side here. Okay, so now just bring it up and again, just as that glue's drying, just make sure that that's all secure. With the bits that overhang, I'm just going to trim those off. You can wrap them around if you want, but I just... I'm going to just trim them along like that. I just think it's a bit neater. I just noticed one of my petals has come off there. Fortunately, it doesn't actually, you know, I don't even know whereabouts it was, so I've just noticed that, but never mind. So, again, that's just all setting nicely there. Okay, then I've got two more pieces that are seven and a half by two. And again, you want to fold these in half. Each of those are going to go inside here and just reinforce the corners there. So you just want to add glue to both sides and just stick them right down. And again, just trim off the little bit that will poke out at the very top, just on this side here. Okay, so that's what you will have. Mine's solid now, really nice and sturdy. Next, I've got the piece for my shelf, which I'd started to just go and glue that down, but I don't want to do that before I show you what you need to do. So this is a piece of three and a half by seven, so it's the whole width of this piece. And you want to stick an, a piece of seven by two, okay, on the edge there. And then rather than folding this over like I have, I'm going to reapply my glue there. We're going to stick this into onto the back of the box here. So, and I'm going to run some glue along the side of that grey board. And you want to stick this on here, four inches up from the bottom. So, if you want to mark a you know pencil line first of all, then you can do. And if you want to come down low. Well, you can but then you'll have to redo the measurements for the drawer when we get to that bit so I'm just using my ruler there just to push it up because I've got that wiggle room but just make sure that that is the same all the way along so that we get a nice um, area for the drawer okay don't worry if this bit moves for the minute but as long as it's straight and then just go in the top here with and just make sure that's really secure. And again, just double check. Four, four, four. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I just went to put the hinges on, but before we secure this, we need to just cover the front sections here. So you may want to do that before you stick this in, but it's not going to, it won't be a problem. It's easy to slide them in. So I've got here two pieces that are two by six and a half. Yep. Okay, and you're going to pop these over these two sides here so you just want to add glue to both sides and you're just covering just the same way and they will sit in there perfectly and then we can add the hinges to get that shelf in place okay right now it's just looking really really odd but once we've done this by putting all this into place once we add the, the decorative paper it's going to look absolutely stunning so I'm just going to go and stick all of those down So that's all there now as well. Then we can go back to these. So I've got here four pieces of two by three and a half, and these are gonna stick either side of the top of the shelf and underneath, and it will hold that shelf in place, and it will also add lots and lots of strength. So I'm just gonna go over 
fact I'll do both at the same time because it's just easier. So I'll do this one with you and then you just want to do the same for the other three corners. So just pop it in there and slide that down. In fact, you may want to take a little bit off. I'm just going to trim that back just a little bit. So I will, yeah, I'd say take about one eighth of an inch just so it's set back just slightly. So pop it in there, yeah, now it doesn't overhang. And then what you want to do with your ruler is make sure it's four inches. And that way you know your shelf is straight. Okay, and you can pop it on its side, flip it around there and just go in and really make sure that hinge is nice and secure. Okay. So now I'm going to do another one on the top here and then two underneath there. Okay, so now you should have a really strong shelf. Next we need to attach this piece to our roof. So I had gone and put the glue on, forgot I hadn't pushed record, but uh, it's okay. That's the thing, when you make these from scratch, all these measurements are obviously my own. I know I've used that little egg holder as a guide, but in terms of doing this and the process. So if you sit it on top, okay, and just make sure you've got even overhang. You'll be able to feel it underneath. This back piece wants to be nice and flush with the back there. Put your hand underneath and just let that grab. And then what you can do is lay it down and let it open up. You can go in there and really push it down and just make sure that everything is nice and, you know, flush. Don't worry about any of this, it's all going to get covered, but you want that to be able to drop down really nicely because that is your, you know, your closure for the top. But you can see there how it's all coming together. It's going to look lovely and it's so strong. And then open it up and grab another piece of 7 by 2 just fold it in half. And then you're going to stick this over there and just have that folded piece right on, you know, the, the hinge here. This needs to open nice and freely. So I would say keep it flat because then when it's dry, you can fold it into the shape. You might have to work it a bit with your bone folder, which I'll show you in a moment, just so that we get a really nice closure, but it's nice and strong at the same time. Okay, so I think what I'll do first, is I'll stick it onto the top actually. This will line up perfectly with the inside. And if you go in here with your bone fold and really push it into, you know, the join there, you can just stick that piece down onto the rest. And as it starts to dry, you can see there, as I push in there, the lid wants to kind of come up a bit. You want it to get used to being in that position. So you want to like start to Fold it down. See, it's a bit bouncy, so I need to just go in and just push it in a little bit more as it starts to dry. But at the same time, you want it to be able to open up nicely and close. But I'm quite pleased with that. I think once I've put my decoration on, because that's going to have a little bit of weight to it, then that will, and eventually it will just settle into that position once things start to soften up a little bit. But that, yeah, no, it's fine. You can see there. Okay. So that's where you need to be at this point. Then we can start sticking the base down and um, making the draw. Okay, so next we want to add this piece into here. Okay, so I'll tell you the measurements in a second, but what I want to do with mine is I'm going to remove this center section, pop acetate behind it, and then die cut that chicken wire effect. Now, if you don't want to do that and you don't want to cut into this, then just keep this as it is. Okay, but if you do want to do it exactly as I'm doing, then you just want to come in. You'll see there I've just put a pencil marker half an inch there and half an inch there. Then our half an inch here, half an inch here, joined those pencil lines up. And then along here, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, and joined up. Then using my trimmer, and this is the same trimmer that I've used to cut all my grey board, I'm going to lay this down so the pencil mark is in the track. And then I'm going to bring this down just so it sits where that crossover is because that's where I want to cut is this middle bit out here. All I want left is a half inch trim. So I can just use, the on this Fiskars one here, I can come down half an inch just there, push that down and then I can see and line this up with this pencil mark here. So it's a really handy trimmer for seeing, you know, where you want to score. 
and I can feel that now so I know that I can stay between those lines okay then what I would also say actually is probably best because I flip it over and then cut again so I'm just going to mark my pencil marks on this side as well okay so that's where I just cut I can now flip it over pop it in and then lay this one down at the same point again and then just cut and then in a minute it will meet see that's now come away so I'm just going to repeat that on all of the other sides okay. now I can very carefully push that out so now I've got fingers crossed what's going to turn into a really cool feature on the front okay sorry and I also didn't give the measurements this is exactly or did I no if I didn't it's seven by two and three eighths of an inch okay so it fits in there perfectly and that can come down but once we've had that chicken wire in the front here we've got the strength because we've got that frame but then we've just got that fun detail as well from it so next we want to decorate this one. I think what I'm going to do with this one rather than wrapping all the different bits and pieces around it is I'm going to use some of this brown card or do I want no I think I'm going to go for a nice fresh colour I'm just going to have a little look okay I think I know what I'm going to do so I've got these hinges ready and what I've gone and done is I've, I'm going to stick with the same wood effect this you want two pieces of seven by two and three eighths so it's exactly the same size as this here and what I'm going to do is flip it over and see make sure it's you know it's perfectly covered because the easiest way I think to do this is then to trace around it so put a nice clear pencil line in there and again with this one okay. and then what you can do is you can either snip in and cut it which some of you might find easier or you can pop it into your trimmer like I did with the grey board and cut it that way. As I've started I'm just going to cut these because at least I can actually see where I'm going. And remove the pencil line because that way you know you'll get it perfect with the, um, the frame there. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. Then what I'm going to do is just distress just some of the corners of this just in case you've got anything that may end up showing it's best to cover it all now so I'm just using this is the one I always use I'm very heavy-handed with this it's so robust it can take it but I'm just going straight onto the grey board here with my ink pad and this is the frayed burlap yeah it's one of my favorites this or vintage photo I love using these so I'm just going around you know all of the edges there probably won't end up seeing it but it's always best to just do this just in case you may have cut it a little short and you don't want any of that grey board showing at least this way you've distressed it up we can get this piece connected we could probably stick yeah I'd stick this down last let's get this on so here I've got my hinges these are you want two pieces you probably need three but I've cut two for the minute that are the full length so seven by one inch and we're going to stick one on the bottom here okay so look it's going to cover a lot of that what we've done but it's mainly for the corners if anything does end up just peeping out a little bit at least you know it's all um you know it won't look bad so i'm just going to add my glue onto one side here and then just stick it, it doesn't really matter which side i don't know why i flipped it over because it really doesn't matter which side but just make sure it runs nice and flush end to end and work it around that corner just as you have with everything else okay that's all on there before we stick that down we just want to cover this front piece here so I've just cut another piece I'm literally grabbing scraps now this is seven by two I'm just gonna cover that yeah, just pop it in there just as we just as you have everything else make sure your front's nice and flat against that grey board. Now with this piece you can add glue under here which I'd already started to do. All along 
there and then this one is going to sit on top of the shelf. Okay, so bring it right up there so it's all flush with the top there. We're going to feed in the sides in a minute for the this other piece. And then you'll be able to go in there and push all that down. Actually, you know, you had lots of pressure there. Check this piece here. Yeah, it's going to look it's going to look really really nice. So that's that piece and then I've got two side pieces here which actually I'll add them on because they're going to go inside here you see you may want to trim a little bit off so you don't see any of it here um, because all that's going to go on the front is that there that's why you want to make sure it completely covers it really well so I think we'll add these in next or do we want to add that base one? It doesn't really matter. This one here, you'll need three because you want one to go on the top. So we we'll do that one now, actually, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to, this is the same size, it's that other piece. I'm just going to add this to the top of that section. Just sit it on top. Don't worry that it's moving around at the minute. Okay, and then you want to add glue. I am going to trim just a little bit off the side that's going to face the front because I don't want it coming into this section here. So I can just, because this will all be covered when we stick the inside as well, but we're going to do that one last after we've added the acetate. So pop that in there. Oh, I didn't put glue on that side. Pushing against it, making sure it's nice and flush. You see there. It all lines up nicely with the front here. Do the same with the other end. And this is that other piece of 7 by one And I'm just adding glue all again on the back side. And then open it up and you're going to pop this. And it will just help reinforce just the front of that. Depending on what you end up putting in here, you know, you don't want it to fall out. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a piece of white card here. You can have any colour you want. And this is two by six and three quarters. And this is going to be what I'm going to have as the colour of my chicken wire. So if you want to do like silver silver cards, like silver mirrored cardstock to give it more of a metal look, then that would look good as well. But I want to keep mine white. And I've got this die here. It's a really old one. I don't know, you know, I can't remember where this one was from. I've had it a long time. But it's perfect for the chicken wire. But because I don't know where this one's from, so if anybody has it or knows, please let me know. There are also these ones here which I have, which are all the Bright Rosa dies. This is the Lace Edge Builder die, this is the Geometric Edge Builder, and this is the Honeycomb. And all of those panels would make really good chicken wire effects, especially this lace one. I think that looks really good. So, you know, there's some other, you know, alternatives there. And just to give you some more inspiration. But I am going to just use this one here. So I've got my die machine. And I'm just going to lay the whole piece down and I'm going to pop a shim, it just, just about meets there as well, which is really good. So I want to keep it nice and straight. I think I'm going to line up the bottom of the die this way and I'm going to pop it near the edge so it really um, cuts well with the rollers. So I'm just going to line it up along that bottom side there, pop another little shim on top there and just run that through. That's that piece. I haven't worried about getting those bits out there because it's going to go behind the frame so you won't see it. I've also cut the same size in some acetate so this is two by six and three quarters and that's going to stick over the front of it. Sorry, yeah I want it over the front. So I'm going to bring in my thin red tape and I'm going to run a line because the other side of this will be covered by the other part of the frame so it will all be concealed so don't worry if there's anything sticky kind of coming through at the moment but just run it I'm not going to cut this I'm just going to just bend it on each corner there trim that off take away the release paper and then very carefully make sure your acetate's nice and clean and just start from one end and just lay that down over the top, like so. 
Okay, and this is going to go behind this piece like that. So next you want to then put some more tape over the top of the acetate. And then you can stick that. It's really easy, just line it up with the bottom nice and flush and then just push all of the rest in place like so. Now when we add this one, our decorative frame, I bring it out, you've got that wood effect, I think it looks really nice, it's got a really professional finish with it. So I'm now going to pop some glue on the back of this and you want to do it on that piece and pop it inside. Okay, so just got the last bits to do to complete the framework and we can add a few more mats to cover it all. I've already done the roof, I'll give you the measurements to those in a moment. Once this is all in place then I will sort out the drawer. So this is the base and this is a piece of seven by, it's just under three and a half, okay? Just a smidge under there, so on your trimmer. You basically want it to sit inside here Right, right down the bottom, it's inside this case, so it's nice and flush with the front, okay? So to attach this, we need these hinges. So I've got four pieces that are two by three and three eighths of an inch, okay? So it's slightly just shy of it, because you're not gonna see any of that. And then I've got two pieces of two by seven, so the whole, whole length there. So first of all, I'm gonna stick one of these onto the front, get that on there first, just to tidy up the front there. I've gone for the darker brown because then it will match the darker brown that's there so everything stays tied together. So I'm just gonna stick that one down first. Okay, so this is gonna go in like so. And to connect it, we wanna start adding in these hinges. So I'm gonna add glue to the back of these ones here. Just going to push that in and again getting the first one in place you just need to kind of use your fingers and your thumbs there just to hold it all in and you want the whole thing if I bring it up you see it's flush with the bottom of this side piece so you want to make sure it's right down there so the base oh <laughs> so the base is completely flat obviously I'm trying to show you in the screen there but again, if I just, also you might find, actually it's probably a good job, put some glue along the side of the grey board as well. And I might just pop it all along this side here and also that side. Because as you're kind of sticking it all in, at least all those sides can stick together as well. So pop it all in, so the whole thing is running flush with the bottom of the the main box and then just stick that hinge in place there. And you should be able to get everything you know squared off, hold all those, so I'm holding those corners together now, pushing against the bottom, it's all nice and flush there as well. Okay so just spend a minute until that grabs. Then I can get another hinge, pop it on that side and then these ones are going to go underneath so the whole thing will become nice and secure and then this longer one will go in the back there okay so go and get them all stuck down okay so we're on to the last pieces now and then it's just the nice bit of doing the final decoration so i've got these two pieces that i've cut for the sides here so you'll want two pieces that measure three and three eighths of an inch by seven and three eighths of an inch and you want to go down one inch on the one of them on the right hand side and come down one inch on one of them on the left hand side and then draw a pencil line because obviously one's going to go on one side and one's going to, going to go on the other. You can also just cut one and then put them back to back and then cut along it that way but you need to make sure that your sloped sides I'm doing here are like that. You don't want them, you know, both the same. So that's your pattern. So I've got one that's going to go on this side here, and then I've got one that's going to stick 
there. Okay, so that's those. And then inside here, I have got this piece for the back, which is just under seven by just under three and three eighths. And then for the base of the inside, this might actually be the same. Yeah, it's just under seven by, that's three and a quarter. Okay, you may have to change yours slightly depending, you know, everybody's maybe just that slightly bit different in size, but they're gonna cover in there. And then these are for the sides, but again, you have to do your little sloped edge. So you want two pieces that are three and a quarter by three and three quarters, okay? And you want them, you know, choose your pattern or whatever it is that you've got. And you want to come down one of the three and a three and three quarter sides by one inch, and then draw your pencil across from that one inch up to the top left in this case. And on this one, you're gonna come down the opposite side at one inch and then draw across. So it's just like the side pieces. You just want to make sure that you're getting those angles in the right direction. So like that. And then if I cut them again, because then that will make more sense to you. Okay, like so. So now that one, well I must have measured that wrong to start with because that's still too big. So it wouldn't be that tall at all. You're going to want yours to actually be three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So it's square. I could have sworn I'd cut those. So I'm just going to redo that again. So these need to be three and a quarter. And I'll put a little thing in there. So it doesn't matter about that bit for me. But now you'll be working with a square, but come down one of the sides, make sure your directional paper is facing the right way up. And, um, and just come down that one inch. So I've just wasted a little bit of uh, pattern paper there, but it's no problem. But again, now, and I cut that out, now fit in there perfectly. Okay, and then I've got that one on that side there. So we'll all line up. Okay, so get all of that stuck down, first of all. Okay, so that's that all done. I really love it. It's coming together so nicely and this is starting to drop now. You can see it's just doing its own thing. So next and finally, <laughs> we have the drawer. So for the back of the drawer, this is a piece of three and three quarters by six and seven eighths. The drawer base is six and three quarters by three and a quarter. And then this piece here, you want two for the sides, they're three and a quarter by uh, three and three quarters. And these pieces here are just the width, so the three and a quarter by two. I've gone by one inch, sorry. I've gone a bit shorter this time because I'm running out of brown. <laughs> but those are gonna be there. And then on the front of the drawer here, I've put a strip on there. So again, it's that six and three quarters by one inch. And then on, along the top there, that's six and seven eighths by one inch. Okay, so get those all put on. Next, we can start putting the drawer together. So I'll pop the base to one side for a minute. So I've got some more hinges here. Actually, I want these, make sure I get the right ones. Yeah, so these ones here. So you'll want two for the moment. You'll need some more, but I'm just doing it step by step. So again, it's that one inch by three and three quarters. And these are gonna go around here, first of all. So pop some glue along this side here and stick it onto the left hand side of one of those side pieces. Just let that stick. And then this one here, again, add some glue onto one side. I'm going to stick this to the right hand side of the other side piece. Then you're going to add glue now to here and to here and you're going to stick it onto the draw back. Okay, like so. When you do this, you want this to come up onto the draw. So if you can see there, onto the back, this side piece is stuck onto this. It's not next to it, it's on the front. Okay, 
and you need to make sure that it is so that we can fit the base in nicely. So it should be able to stand up on top of this piece. So again with this one here, I'm just going to pop glue along the side of that grey board. If you don't stick it on top, the drawer probably won't fit. So it is, you know, important to make sure, again I'll show you here, pop that under and bring this piece over onto the top of it there. So I'm not going on the side like this, it's got to go on top. <laughs> Sorry if I keep repeating it, I just need to make sure because I want you, you know, we're at the last bit now so I don't want you um, getting frustrated with this end piece. I want it to be a, a triumph. So again, just spend a minute making sure that's all secure. Okay, like this. Now we can grab the draw base and you'll see that will sit in there perfectly and it's gonna stick all of the three sides we're gonna put glue onto are gonna to stick to the three sides of this. So this isn't sitting on top of it, this is sitting inside. And that will then, you can always check as well now, but you'll see my drawer slides in really nicely. Okay, so actually before we do that, we need to cover the front bits here. I always forget, so you'll need, those are for the bottom. Yeah, here and here. So two more of that size that you would have used on the back hinges just then. Actually, just stick one side because this is going to be the hinge to stick it onto the front piece there. So I'll just do one side here. So leave that over, you know, not stuck down for the moment. And again, so just have it like that. Okay. Now I'm going to run my glue all along here. I'm just going to put hinges onto this as well. So this isn't all that's holding it together. It's just to kind of get it in place. Make sure all of, you know, push against all the sides and just make sure it's flush with the bottom. It's a nice deep drawer. You can get lots of stuff in this. So like I said, this storage will hold a nice amount of things. So if I just bring it over this way, you can see there how all of that sits perfectly. So it's nice and flush with them. And we'll put hinges around here and here so that everything is nice and secure. Okay, so I've done a lot and I've just popped it on high speed. So you would have seen me just cover all these sides with the hinges, okay, and all on the back there as well. So you just want to make sure yours like it looks like that. Like I said, I will add all of these measurements and stuff will be on my blog. And then I've also gone ahead and covered all inside there. Because some of you may want to just keep it like this, you may want to stack, you could maybe put some ink pads and things like that in there. So you've got the option there if you want to. So that's why I just thought it would be nice to cover in there. I'm going to cover the back and the bottom with just plain, you know, just like a, a cardstock, um, a paper or something. Because I will, I've, I think I want to have this actually on my wall. I think I'm going to either make a hook on it or I'm actually going to screw through here and actually attach it to the wall. I think it's going to look really nice. So this is where you want to be with this. Now I did go and change the front of this. I had it brown originally, I didn't like it, so I've changed it to cream. So this piece of grey board here is six and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then I just came in half an inch, came in half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, and drew a pencil line connecting them. And then along here, I came in half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, Again, drew a pencil line and then cut that center out just as I did exactly the same way as this piece here okay and then I drew around these two pieces which are the same size as that piece again so six and three quarters by three and three quarters you want two pieces cut out the center and then my acetate and my chicken wire effect there is three and a half by six and five eighths okay 
You would have had these hinge pieces here still attached and then what I've done is I covered this top one, it's a different colour again, I'm kind of grabbing all the brown, but it works with this paper I'm using because it has all different shades of brown so it doesn't, you wouldn't know looking at that there already that there's loads of different colours in there and it all adds to the charm of it. So the top one you want to cover completely and then the bottom one you want to just cover the front and then leave that hinge. This is going to sit on top of this piece it's going to sit on top of your your side pieces and it's going to sit in front of this okay so if I just stick that like so this is going to come around that hinge will sit on the bottom and then we can put some hinges in there and along the bottom and you'll see there how that all comes together okay so what I would suggest you do is add some glue along the top of the grey board here and all along here you also add glue onto these hinges here. This is solid. I know I keep saying it, but it is really, really solid. It's just like the bureau. And I probably would have linked it at the beginning, but I'll link in my other storage as well because you can, you know, make this all matching. I've got such a nice playlist of some really lovely storage pieces. So now I'm going to sit that on top of there, stick that one over. Stick that side on top of there, stick that over, and then make sure the bottom sticks down there as well. And if you bring it up, you can push down onto the base, and then you can just make sure that they stick against there. Just see me there I've just added the hinges all inside now that's all secure you might need to trim a little bit off of one side there so it doesn't show you know through this window I've just taken the backing off of this where I have the sticky tape and just stick that one down I love this detail it looks so good okay. and then I just need to add my frames so I'm just going to stick these two on okay so the whole of my drawer is covered apart from the base again I, well, I probably just won't end up doing that You've, there's no need really what I've now gone and done is I've got this rope which I want to have on as a pulley I don't want to put it in I kind of put it in a little bit but I don't want to put it all the way in yet because I won't get it out so I'm going to use my upper dial here and I've just come in at two inches on both sides and then right in the middle of this piece I'm going to do the larger holes because I've got that thick rope that I want to get through and that will cut nicely through. Again you may choose to have a bit of hardware, you may have like a metal pulley on there or something, it's entirely up to you and a lot of you may not have done the you know the acetate window there like I have. So that's those and I think, no because it will make this hole smaller, I was going to add some of my you know, eyelets and my grommets, but I'm not going to bother. So this end's got some sellotape on just so I can feed it through this one here. Hopefully it's going to fit because so I really want to use this rope, which I just, I think it, I don't know, I can't even remember what it was from now. Okay, and I've put a knot on that end and then I'm going to thread this one back through. That was an effort, but I got there in the end, but I really like it. And I've left them in there just a little bit like fluffy because I just think it looks quite nice. But now also one other thing, when you push it in, if you feel like you've got a lot of air, you might need to just puncture a couple of holes in the back, which sounds quite severe, but right down in the bottom corners here, I've just gone in here with this. This is my weeding tool for my Cricut, but I've just punctured a hole through. It doesn't affect the box in any way, but it just means that when you're pushing this in there, the, the air has somewhere to go rather than pushing back on you. So now that goes in perfectly and I can feel the air coming out on my hand as I push the drawer in there. And then I've got that now to just pull that out really nicely. It's so cute. I love this so much. Okay, I am done. This has taken me about three hours to do, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'll just show you, I've added one of my acetate butterflies. I think they look really real and I've just done it with a little bit of hot glue. So it's just resting on the top of that white flower. So it's just like, come down to settle on top of the flower and have a rest. 
<laughs> and then this is a little fabric flower which I've just layered up and put some little green stamens in the center I've got one of my glittered daisies and then these are just all from my stash and I've added my glitter pen over the top there as well and you can just see some of that shining there when it hits the light so there you have it finished hope you've enjoyed the tutorial I will list all the measurements okay apart from maybe some of the like the hingy bits I think you can kind of work those all out because it's just the the measurement that you already have but all your mats and layers and everything I will list for you but um and yeah I mean for now I'm not going to bother with the back because like I said I intend to put this on my wall I think it's a beautiful piece to have displayed and uh, now I need to find what I want to put in it <laughs> or I could have it for now somewhere nice on my desk we will see but there you have it so thank you for watching today hope you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up if you have and consider subscribing so you get to see more thanks for watching bye